This is the Groove Guru podcast. Uh, my name is Windsor and my guest today is Dylan Howe. And Dylan's best known for leading his jazz groups since 2002 and his tenures with Ian Dury and the Blockheads, his father Steve Howe of the Yes, and Wilco Johnson, all coupled with extensive pop and rock session work since 1990. Uh, along the way, you've amassed many recording credits as a sideman with a plethora of renowned artists and bands and you've created many albums as a leader uh, with your uh, subterranean new designs on Bowie's Berlin gaining much acclaim and favourable mm -hmm. praise from David Bowie himself and yeah. Dylan thanks for being here today. And uh, yeah of to course it's a pleasure. The podcast. Thank you. Cool and, and yeah Dylan I, I first saw, uh, heard and met you uh, when we recently toured a few years ago uh, on, right. the same, on the same bill. You know, I, I was playing yeah. with uh, Hugh Cornwell, who you've also played with, and maybe we can yeah, get yeah. into that a little bit. And yes. you were with uh, Wilco Johnson, along with uh, Norman Watroy, and I love the vibe of what you guys uh, brought to those shows and the stage each night. And we were also, there was I think there was a festival last year in the UK, Kubix, that we were on the same bill uh, oh, yeah, the, the, right. yeah, we didn't manage to catch up then, but hey, great to reconnect today. Hello, yeah, yeah cool. that's good. Yeah, so uh, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I mean, I think you know, for us both as players, you know, after the whole Corona situation, you know, it put live music on hold for a lot of musicians. And you know, how how are you finding been out? playing again these days? Yeah, it's funny, I isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You kind of, uh, I mean, I'm still kind of adopting the same approach that I kind of uh, caution space, uh, not getting near anybody and just kind of making sure that I'm not, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still pretty careful. I still think it's kind of uh, an, an issue. But yeah, I mean, it, I think, you know, for everybody, it was really weird, wasn't it, going, well, you know, having everything kind of stop and then regrouping and then kind of starting again, but in kind of trickles and then it would sort of stop a little bit and then, you know, so it feels a bit more like it's going to be a bit more uninterrupted, I think, now. But it's still, mm. it's still, yeah, it just sort of shows you um, maybe like the live thing or music or the arts in general is, isn't isn't it's it's not particularly valued by a lot of people but but they uh but i think you know they um appreciate it when it's back but it's sort of you know it makes you think of things really it, it, everything got a kind of you know shift of perspective didn't it really you know so mm. but it's said uh, but yeah i mean it's obviously it's really good to be to be out there again as we have been recently you know um uh, and yeah yeah, everyone's all right. So we kind cool. of got this far, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, you know, after the 18 months or however long it was and starting to like, like do shows again for the first time in well yeah. over a year, it was like, how, how do we do this again? You know? Yeah, <laughs> then, I, know, you know I know. It was back up and kind running. Of, and... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, I, I suppose. How do you feel? Do you feel like okay, a kind of going into venues and, and like, uh, you know, being around everybody and, you traveling and stuff is that yeah yeah feel I, right? I, yeah yeah I, I feel fine with that you know like when i'm doing cool. things with you etc you know we are it's kind of a well-oiled machine we usually travel mm. together and yeah, it's right. kind of kind of a set routine you know if we're doing a tour you know there's a certain order of things get to the place sound check blah, 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 blah. by the time that's all done okay get something to eat chill before the show warm up do the show blah, 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 repeat 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 and mm. yeah it's it, it's cool and, and i just love getting into that the the flow of it you know when you've been playing with a an act and again i don't i, don't, I keep talking about me i'd love to hear your perspective as well but the, that mm. the, you know when you get to the point of you know playing the same set of songs so that you're yeah. so familiar with it that yeah that you're just so in the moment and it just flies by like the yeah. perception of time thing that we could be playing for a, like two hour sets or something and it's like they're like five minutes each it's like how did that yeah happen? <laughs> yeah it's funny isn't it how that mm. can be uh you know every night it can feel different or yeah. When, yeah yeah i suppose when you feel like you're playing parts uh set parts kind of often in a lot of the songs and then there's some 
sections of the songs that are more kind of open-ended or sort of improvised so yeah yeah it's just sort of um yeah it is it is interesting how it can feel quite different sometimes you know? yeah. yeah absolutely yeah cool and and so Dylan you know I'd love to hear about your uh your journey like your background as a musician from you know when you mm. started the music to where you are today and yeah you know, so first off, you know, I imagine that with your dad being and you know, no less than you know, the prog band, yes, that mm. it meant that you would be surrounded from uh, with music from a very young age. Um, it definitely was, was, yeah, was, yeah. Was, I mean, let's talk, let's talk felt, about that. It just felt really like uh, a natural thing, really. It wasn't unusual. Uh, so you know, all of the reference points that you that I had were just very immediate and. They, they they were kind of there from an early age and so seeing seeing other people kind of on a stage or the kind of traveling or and and sort of the kind of slightly itinerant uh, lifestyle and all that was seen to I mean I I ever since I was young I'd like really like to be in studios <laughs> so I thought they were quite cozy I could curl up somewhere or it was like a kind of like a spaceship you know almost you know uh, yeah, yeah so I I, I just felt really really at home in those situations I suppose and then and then you know um my dad had, had a drum kit in his studio upstairs in the house and I started to mess around on that when I was I don't know maybe eight or something eight or nine and we would sometimes play together a bit and then I I got into school bands you know in school and we were playing like the, you know after school and school hall and stuff and so that that it was just an immediate thing and there wasn't really any other thing that I wanted to do or could imagine myself doing so kind of school was a bit of a formality you know really I was a good way to leave you know <laughs> and just get into bands and get into the I mean at that time I was still kind of under the impression as a lot of people are in school that you would like join a band and and they were your friends and you'd go through it together and you'd do all that kind of Thing. so but it, after a while it, I started to realize that that that's a kind of fancy really so so I thought I should get good at kind of lots of styles and and uh and not and not just kind of like one thing and 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 then it was really a, you know a big sort of I suppose the the things that changed me quite a lot were getting into well I suppose just sort of the first time I got into black music really into, into like Stevie Wonder into Motown into funk and everything I, then I kind of realized wow there's a there's this sort of um there's a massive difference between you know the feel the sound of all the drummers that I'm seeing in England and then all of the like Americans so mm. it was a it was a shift you know into understanding starting to get into the history of the drums and 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 also of all the good music really so yeah. So I'd stop being so into sort of early 80s pop, you know, which, which <laughs> you know, I was the right age for that. And then suddenly it was like, OK, now how do I find my way into jazz, work, work my way backwards and stuff to yeah, yeah. everybody. And, and then all the drummers and that. And then and then. But yeah, another turning point, I suppose, was kind of working out. I started to see on lots of, say, the same musicians were appearing on like cd wonder records and like david bowie records and like mm. other people's albums and then i started to hear about this thing called like a kind of um like a kind of studio group like a kind of house band um mm. and i thought wow to, so you would have to be really good to be able to be in this band that just sort of lives in a studio somewhere and mm. you you're on like lots of people's records and and so i started to kind of try and investigate who all these people were and, and like why was it so good and and uh, the chemistry thing and then yeah i'm standing you know d just sort of that that was the beginning of that whole thing of um trying to get good and get serious i suppose you know. mm, awesome mm. and who who are but some more of those key players that really in inspired you along the way because like you know you know when you get the house bands like you know i'm mm. thinking you know like the the motown guys the yeah Stacks muscle group. shells and yeah mm. snacks and basically all all of them really and and then you know they, they and and i suppose you know seeing who was on all of this the silly dan records and stuff then oh. working out 
why and how they got through the kind of you know the sieve of, of Donald Fagan's sort of uh, very strict uh, sieve you know yeah and, and so just trying to kind of yeah I mean it's you know it's 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 like all those people that everybody always cites really and and and, and they're generally you know Americans of a certain era from the 50s to the 70s and stuff mm. and um and that and that was that was a real thing of kind of you know trying to trying to understand that because because I suppose sometimes I think about it when I when I was young and I'd see like yes play or someone I'd see especially if it was especially if it was with um you know Bill Bruford or something then it was a lot more like the drums were an expressive thing and it was a lot more like a kind of equal role uh, but then I started to realize actually that's not really what anybody wants so so you had to have these kind of phases that are all kind of switches that you, you can switch into so so understanding what it means to be like a session drummer uh, versus a kind of instrumentalist uh, artist you know <laughs> those two things are really very far apart so so we, so try not to get too lost in either side and and, and to kind of i mean I, I suppose the history the kind of overall the feeling of, of my musical uh life has always been the kind of you know commerce versus art in in like how i feel about what i'm doing so it's always been like well you've got to earn a living uh but i i i like things that probably aren't going to earn you a living you know the kind of the kind of music I like or the kind of things it's it's more of a niche thing or specialist thing so it's finding the joy in the groove uh and that is you know it's a it's a big subject and then trying to and then also kind of understanding how that can transmit into everything that you like so so I, I was always sort of torn between like the jazz thing and like the groove thing um you know the sort of um stripped down just like yeah. time and then the kind of expression and soloing and interaction so so um hmm. you know there's some it, things there to, to, to yeah, think about yeah. Abso absolutely yeah there's a lot a yeah. lot to unpack there you know you know having yeah. that awareness of uh, uh context you know context, working as yeah. a, a session musician it's like, okay what's required for that scenario definitely that one and that one and that one and and I, I think what would be awesome would be you know you know so as your you know career has pro progressed as a side man and a, mm. a leader you know what are you know some of those key lessons that you've uh that's a good question that's, yeah that's, that's really shaped you and and as a drummer you know maybe human and maybe you could reference those alongside okay yeah. some of, the, some of the, the gigs you've done yeah I, I think I think that like um you know when i started to well it's it's a lot it's like the first it's a, it's like the first time you play with the click track and you and you're like well, what the hell's going on <laughs> no, no yeah. one no one prepared me for this you know? <laughs> and then uh and then you kind of understand you know that it's that it's uh it, it's an ally and stuff and 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 it you know keeps things um sort of sort of honest and there's and there's so much sort of it doesn't it, there's like in time and there's like you can't hear the click in time or it you feel so good you you aren't aware of anything that's that is there or yeah. or that and that can happen just in a room with a bunch of people and mm -hmm. and uh, so um so what what am i trying to say yeah i don't know really just sort of um um i i suppose you know the things that I've done that I felt frustrated, you know, maybe or just like it was too. Um, I don't know. It's difficult because you've got to like the music, but you've got to um, make the right decisions, or you've got to. And then there's a whole element of kind of showbiz which I really hate, and then there's a whole kind of element of like musicians with other musicians that I don't like. So it's it, it's a it's a difficult. Um, I don't know what what I would say to myself if I was young. I, I don't know if I would listen anyway. <laughs> but I think uh, I think it's like um, that last bit. You don't know if you'd listen. I lost you there to myself. 
if oh, I right, told right. myself now, you know, I don't know if I'd take the notice, but but I think that that it's so uh, it's just like maybe maybe the best way to put it is that when you when you're enjoying it or when you when you love it, uh, mm. you're not really analysing so much, or you when you start out, it's a bit like all all that stuff isn't there and, and so you kind of um so there's so there's just a kind of pure joy thing going on but but then yeah. as you kind of progress through a kind of more of a professional uh prism and and interactions and and mm -hmm. criticisms or or really like understanding what it is to 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 kind of lock a band together and to kind mm -hmm. of make everyone else feel secure and and not and not to you know to go off somewhere so mm -hmm. um i think i'm going on to a weird tangent so if you so no, no, might it's, have to it's, find it's, a question again. sorry yeah no no, no. Yeah. it's it's interesting that it's that you know yeah. why, why we start with with music it, it is that the the joy of it and there is that yeah. fun and, and yes balancing it with the the understanding of you know what's right for this uh situation and then there's yeah a real a real joy uh, i find that can come when you know after you've you're, you're in the context you've kind of picked apart what it is that uh, you want to do and you've kind of figured mm. it out and then you get to the point that then it's like you've done all the thinking and then you can just play it and then it's just yeah fun again well that's it that's that's what it always should be isn't it really and mm -hmm. and i think often it can be that and, and and even even after you've been doing it for you know years and years and stuff it's like um mm. i th i think it's it, it's it if you still yeah if you can still find a lot to love about it and and the right people to be around you know yeah, yeah. most of the time to do it with then 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 it, it's you know it, it's a it's a great thing isn't it and and yeah i mean i found i found it was interesting because of the lockdown thing i thought well I, okay it, it was quite it was a good opportunity really to practice and to kind of see what I needed to do really so so I kind of like um it was pretty what good was that? I didn't For I you? didn't really like uh it didn't really kind of change my world that much because I can't I, I've been getting into this thing of practicing a lot I like to be at home and uh and kind of and I kind of do these tours in in these blocks and stuff and then I come back and mm. and then I so I found that I I changed my grip on my left hand like mm. a lot and it is sort of it's, it's been a real it's, it's been really good actually because i would always like i was taught like this sort of moella mm. thing uh mm. from bob armstrong and right and it was all this sort of you know that that, that sort of stuff and drop and, and yeah 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 but and Much actually good. i think i think that was wrong you know <laughs> all right i think I, it's interesting because like i wanted to I wanted to wanted to play like this really, and mm. this I think this thing. So, I, well, no, I to re, I think the drums are designed that you play traditional grip really, mm -hmm. and and because that that would be too much of a kind of leap to relearn from like mm -hmm. uh, m m match grip yes. into into that. I, but I saw like if you if you see Bill Stewart, he mm. he has a way. A so he's got two things that he's doing, which which I think. Okay, so how is he getting such a good sound all the time, and mm. and such a great sort of application with his hand? Uh, and then so first I could see that he was doing this thing with his right hand, where mm -hmm. he was sort of gripping inside the stick, and it would make a kind of click. Kind of sound mm, so yes so i started investigating that and that is actually it's really good you can you can get it if you just slightly turn the stick and close your fingers around it and there's a little kind of air pocket and it kind of goes yep. top 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 which is great and then i think mm -hmm. okay but left hand like uh this like moella thing man it's i just set this sort of a wall like i yeah. i can't get everything i want out of the left hand it's just not strong mm -hmm. enough it's not clear enough it's like so i flipped it like the right hand so i'm thumbed down 
right and then everything so it's like an intermediary step in between like trad grip but you're like thumb thumb down and suddenly mm -hmm. it's like bang everything yeah. is like it's really defined much mm -hmm. stronger and it's and it's it's about that and this and the drop and mm. the and and like the rebound i would yeah, recommend yeah. it anybody but that more... is like stuck in mm. uh match grip and is thinking why why can't i do the things i want to yeah, do yeah 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 you know? so that's a, more like a, a kind of french grip approach like from there what it's called there. yeah 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 because it's like the, there's like the german We'll grab some scrabber sticks, right? Yeah, go on. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Ta da! All right, then, uh, let's see if you can see. It. Yeah, I mean, the that standard uh, wave, which, you know, is it's a great starting point, you know, if you relax your shoulders, bring your arms up. Yeah. You know, naturally, the hand is in that position. So, so it's in that, yeah, that, just like the palm is flat thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fingers yeah, are, yeah. yeah, yeah. So and, and so that, yeah. that that kind of naturally happens, you know. There's a the, the kind of triangle vibe, and, and that's like I call that like the the home position. Like it's a good place yeah. To, well, I to used start, to call that home. I, I right, left right, right. home, man. I've yeah. changed. I've changed my home now. You know, right, I'm right. like in a different house than this one. And I, I would recommend. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And it's like, like a, a starting. So point. the French and, group is yeah. that. Is yeah, that yeah. What, um, so so like German, uh, Keith French. Keith was or, using something like that, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's he's in, into a lot of that. So I mean, there was, like to get really geeky, it's like there was like German, which is like you know back of the hand facing up. French, yeah. you could say like timpani grip with the thumbs up, and then ah, maybe like that's a what hybrid. I'm doing it can be like a hybrid, like American one, which is like halfway in between, and you know there's here uh, and there's there, and it's it's interesting to experiment. But yeah, okay. but that's but interesting. You you mentioned Bill Stewart. I mean, um, there's a, a jazz club in, in Surrey, uh, Dorking, Watermill. Oh well, yeah, uh, and I, yeah, and there, it, it was, and it was like, oh wow, Bill Stewart's playing it. So I know. Let's check that well, out. The like, last time, wow, the last time he was there, the um, they were asking around for other drummers to lend him a snare drum. And so right. so I lent him one of my snare drums and uh came down there, but he tuned it up to like <laughs> yeah. I thought he was gonna break it, man. It was, was like, that, like was like, it like tink. a brass Ludwig one? Yeah, yeah. I remember it. Yeah, it was and like it was, see, that's cranked. It was like how do you how how are you gonna get any kind of buzz out of that? It's, it's mm. so dry, it's like tink, tink, but he's yeah, still yeah, something yeah. great. I mean, he's amazing, oh. but but yeah, so so I, I suppose seeing seeing that and sort of, but I tell you what, it took ages, man, to to like try and get it mm. anywhere <laughs> near usable. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. At first, it was like, oh no, you know, I'm like completely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's coming. It, it's good. It's good. It's getting there now. I yeah, bet it's, it's taken about three years, you know. Of, right. of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do do do. <laughs> you're thinking oh my god i'm doing this again yeah 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 that so repetition, repetition it's like oh wow but it's it's good it's uh i'd say it's worth it yeah yeah cool and that's it, it was really interesting the the thing that i noticed about bill uh stewart on that night is yeah is that wow you, he's got so much subtlety and nuance in his playing yeah. great feel and whereas it's like when when i've experimented with traditional grip i mean i played match grip the vast majority of the time yeah but whenever i play traditional it's like there's that different fundamentally different feeling in each hand so, so it's not like two to the same it's like two yeah. different things i and just I, think that it's something about the something about the rebound mm. if you play trad grip it's just it, it it's much more natural and and it just naturally like your 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 hand is like a claw that can just mm. sort of sit on this on the shell kind of you know yeah whereas yeah. with the with like the match thing it's the hmm. anyway yeah, i'm it, just into that right now no, yeah. yeah it's cool it's like that in oh con continuing the geekery for a bit it's all good yeah it, it, cool. it, it's like with the traditional grip i love how it's like you know the the hands underneath the stick whereas yeah. with the match grip it's like over but when you flip it that way it's almost yeah. like that trad thing where it's you've got that sense of lightness and yeah the, the, the thing i i loved about bill stewart was I found it fascinating to watch and hear was that you know both of his hands were like different positions. It's not like they were both yeah. that or both that. They were both just slightly different for, for, got, for the yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a master. He's a, he's oh. like a. I've been like you know following him for so long and and that kind of yeah, it's just great. It's just uh, uh, it's, he's he's like you know he's kind of taken 
the best of Roy Haynes and and Tony Williams and kind of sucked them together into into a thing which is a bit which which has like a slightly kind of like a kind of funk element uh, as mm. as well. So yeah, 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 yeah. It, it sure grooved. He's a killer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Uh, oh, good. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Yeah. You know, I, I loved hearing you play with those guys and uh, Will Cole and oh, we can thanks. talk about that. And so, yeah. Ian Jury and the Blockheads, how did that one come up for you? Uh, it, I did some sessions with Chaz uh, before. Yeah, there, was a, there were like two, two avenues at the same time. It was like a few years before I, Chaz called me out to do some sessions. Not sure how he got my number. I can't remember. And then, but also I'd worked with Davey Payne with um, Chris Jagger, uh, and then he, so so like it was it was almost like a couple of people said, why don't we try Dylan or something? Or, and then I was on the TV at that time in this afternoon house band um, show called Light Lunch, and so it, it it was like easy for them to like switch on the TV and see me sort of thing. Mm. So. So those those three things kind of happened, and then they sort of went, oh yeah, yeah, he sounds alright or something. And then, so I I just got a phone call out of the blue, and I was like, oh yeah, you joined the Blockers, you yeah, know, I remember them. And 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 then um, he said, well, we've got, you know, we've got like a couple of days rehearsal, and then there's a gig like next week, and in a castle in Nottingham or something. Mm. And then and so it it was a very quick kind of thing. I just sort of did these little charts of all the songs and stuff, and and um, didn't really have a lot of a chance to practice them. I, I mean, it's, but it was, it, it was like then it was, you know, it was much more, everything was much more hectic than I suppose, you know, so, hmm. so we just sort of got together and had like one afternoon or two or something. And then, and yeah. then Ian was in the back. He was just went, yeah, sounding good. <laughs> so yeah. then, off we awesome. went really. And then, and then I just thought I was just doing the one gig, really, because um, because uh, Stephen Monty he was away and he double booked himself or something for mm. one show, and and then but then they said, oh, do you want to do do, wanna do some more? And I said, yeah, and 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 actually, yeah, then not long after that, we went to Dubai. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh, right. that was one first time we went there, and cool. um, yeah, so that was a thing, really, because it. it it was pretty interesting because because here because it, it was a, links a little bit to what I was saying earlier on. It was that here's a band which are kind of like really into jazz and but also like really into the studio players and really into funk and then mm. and they've been like hired as a kind of entity of their own to play on other people's records and stuff. So yeah. so they were like the Wrecking Crew or or like mm. kind of like Marshall Shoals band, but but of like you know West yeah. London or something. You know so. So I thought, I thought, oh, what well, I'm, 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 I'm on it. This is great, I'm, and and yeah. I'm just going to learn from these guys and stuff. And and you know, as you know, with everybody from from that era, they they have some great stories. And 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 yeah, it's, yeah, I, I was it's wondering. It's a lot about the hang, isn't it? Really, it's a yes. lot about that. You know, and yeah, very cool. And so, so you were on like a, and again, because you know some. Uh, you know, musicians I, I speak with, they talk about, you know, how do you get those kind of gigs? So just to, to recap, you were, it was oh. a, a TV show that you were on. So you were like playing and you were visible type thing. I was on, yeah, I was on this thing every day, five days a week at, at like lunchtime Channel 4 show and it was live. And so we were right, like right, a, right. a live house band. So, I mean, that that in itself was at first, it's <laughs> free it's sort of hair raising, you know, you think, right, oh right, my right, God, right. you know, so you get, used to that and you start to settle in so it was good because we do little stings and then we play along with people and and but it it so that all these gigs like you know it's it's essentially kind of who you know and if somebody else says your name as well then you're in with half a chance you know because it's yeah, like yeah. a couple of people are kind of oh yeah i've heard of him or something and but that doesn't matter anything until you get there so yeah. it's and then it's all about just what it feels like in the room anyway yeah. Yeah. and and uh, so and then obviously you've got to have you know a lot of the music there down or or, or feel good with it or something yeah. um but i i don't know i think i think um those those sort of guys which are which are like when like 
other musicians are hiring you it's completely yeah. different to when like you know a management or a record company or a kind of star is there because they don't know anything about it. i mean it's just yeah. like it's just another mm. you know it's a, it's something else it's a different thing so so yes. like um yeah that that right. was a combination and it, and it and it helped that i'd done a few things for some of the other people individually uh, that were in the group and stuff so I don't know. It's all. It's all. It's all luck, isn't it? Really? It's all but crazy. It's, it's all interesting random. how it comes about. It's all, you know, <laughs> very, it very cool. It's all and crazy. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's like you know, you joining that band uh, again, a very, a very rock and roll <laughs> band. And and I, yeah. I remember hearing, I think it was uh, um, an interview. I think it was with Wilco Johnson, uh, who mm. was saying that you were kind of the young one in that lineup. And um, and yeah. again, coming back to what you're saying about the stories like because a lot yeah, of those guys God. had a lot of rock and roll miles on the tires it was different back then it, it's just that i mean i'm sure there was still an element of that in, in in other areas but you're but this was a bit more like it's a band and, and everyone's kind of you know together and there and it's a certain age thing and there's a drug mm. thing going on and there's a kind of hangout and then there's a so yeah it's a different it's mm. very different to other things isn't it yeah. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure you and, find that with Hugh and stuff. I mean, it's very much like, oh yeah, we he, do loads of drugs. He's no, of no, that okay. vintage. <laughs> he's of that vintage, and and he's seen all those things, and he's mm. and he's got his, um, you know, so so that 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 sort of era of like, you know, the the English sort of new new wave era, coupled with kind of all of the influences that were coming over the water, yeah. it, it was a good one. I thought, yeah, yeah. it was any, interesting to couple that any, together. Yeah, awesome. Mm. And any mm. memorable kind of like fun stories that really stand out as oh that was that was a cool experience. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean there's lots of them, aren't there? Really. Um, I mean, they always seem to have some story about having to take Ian's leg off or something because he was so drunk and <laughs> causing a lot of trouble and stuff, and and they had to carry him upstairs and then sort of lock him in his room, and then he's he's like screaming at all of them saying you're all fired and stuff and they'd be like no we're not you know it's like <laughs> many many of those because you know he was uh, he was quite hard to handle sometimes and 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 all of them got got into various scrapes you know so i mean i liked it because i was like uh, 26 or something then and mm. and and like the yes experience uh, was so kind of um so it was so kind of private or it was so different uh and it you know it wasn't about funk and and like jazz and stuff it, it, it was a different thing and then and then like the kind of all the gigs i've been doing before then were were, were, were kind of soul soul based gigs or house band gigs and stuff and and then starting to get to jazz things but but i kind of hadn't rubbed shoulders with with those guys yet and it, and it was really funny it was great you know and, and and it still is you know it's still got a lot of those um elements you know 